Praxis Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. I've done a couple of videos recently on North Korea. Uh, it's a conflict that I've seen coming for a while, and in the last few videos I was fairly optimistic about the chances of a hot war being averted. I knew that we were headed for conflict, and that's where we are, clearly at the moment. Uh, but in the last video I suggested that I felt that, uh, on account of the fact that a hot war is in absolutely nobody's interest, um, except for maybe one person, <laughs> uh, that uh, it was something that was probably less than likely that we were going to be get, getting into a nuclear war with North Korea. Uh, I said that there were a lot of steps between where we had been and starting an actual hot war. And we've crossed a couple of those steps. And I felt I, I should update, at least you know, officially, that my feeling now is, I don't know, kind of 50-50 on it. Uh, the, the big wild card in all this that I've always said all along is Donald Trump. Now, it's in nobody's interest to start a hot, hot war, not in the American uh, population's interest, not in North Korea's, not South Korea's, not Japan's, not China's, not anybody's interest to have a war. But presidents have been known to start wars or start aggressive actions when their poll numbers are slipping, and Donald Trump's poll numbers have been slipping. Uh, and last week, there was a lot of rhetoric with Donald Trump tacitly saying he was about to attack North Korea. Now, I know that the White House has peddled back from that, but he pretty much said, your days are numbered, we're coming for you. I, and the North Koreans interpret it, say that they interpret that as an act, a declaration of war, and the North Koreans are claiming that they see the, the current uh, situation as being that one that the uh, United States has declared war on them. Now, again, the White House has backpedaled from that, uh, but that's, you know, potentially what they're telling all of their population. So the people of North Korea are, you know, under the impression that they are in a state of war right now. Uh, and when Donald Trump was, uh, you know, shooting off his mouth at the UN and everywhere else, uh, you know, being very bellicose, very aggressive toward, towards North Korea, uh, people were looking at his poll numbers and phew, people really liked it. His poll numbers are really going up. Donald Trump knows that. Uh, his advisors know that, uh, and that's going to play into his calculus. Donald Trump is somebody who seems very preoccupied with popularity and how people view him. Now, uh, I think maybe he even might have scared himself a little bit over the weekend with him shooting his mouth off, uh, or, or last week. I mean, over the weekend he spent, even though Puerto Rico is going into this state of apocalyptic cataclysm, he spent the whole weekend just, you know, shooting his mouth off about... NFL and some stupid distraction about people kneeling or standing or whatever. Um, so maybe he's looking for a different distraction. Maybe he scared himself a little bit and he wants to back off. But we don't know. And we do know that people were really cheering on uh, the idea of starting a war with North Korea because his poll numbers were going up when he said that he wanted to start one. Now, uh, talking tough is different than actually starting a war. And his even if Donald Trump doesn't know that, his advisors clearly would know that, and I would hope that they'd be advising him that even though the, a lot of the American public is very supportive of him threatening to go to war, that a lot of that support will uh, dwindle very quickly if we get into a nuclear war with North Korea. Talking tough and actually getting punched in the face are two different things, and in a war with North Korea, there would be punches to the United States' face. People joke about how incapable North Korea is, but they are a dangerous adversary. They are someone that has nuclear weapons. People talk about the United States' missile shields, but those missile shields, even under ideal circumstances, are only two out of three kind of effective. Uh, so, you know, in theory, if the North Koreans shot three missiles at us and gave us forewarning that they were going to do it, and shot them at a very specific place that we were anticipating, uh, one of those missiles would likely get through, even if we had all that forewarning. We, our missile shields are not what I think a lot of people think that they are. The United States is going to get hit and hit hard if we're in a war with North Korea. So there's a lot at stake here. Hopefully, cool heads are going to prevail, but I felt that I needed to you know, put out a statement, just whereas my last statement was very optimistic, that. I'm kind of 50-50 now. I mean, it could go either way, and I feel that really we're just one mistake, one miscalculation away from a hot war. It just takes, you know, one, one soldier in North Korea that has an anti-aircraft weapon and fires down a United States uh, aircraft with, you know, soldiers on board. 
That just has to happen once. And the people in North Korea, as far as we know, are being told that there is an active state of war and that shooting down American aircraft is, you know, that's what you do in war. So we're really only one thing like that away from this really getting out of hand and a lot of people, a lot of people getting hurt. So hopefully we can avert it. But that's where things are now. They're very dangerous. That's why we prep <laughs> to be ready if things happen. Now, in a nuclear war, there are some circumstances when you know, all the prepping in the world is not going to help you. <laughs> if you're gr at ground zero, it, you, know, you know, a nuclear weapon goes off, you know, they say just make sure you're good with God <laughs> at that point. But uh, for the majority of the U.S. population, you know, uh, we are not in that kind of a, a dire threat. We are in, under threat of being in a war state and, uh, you know, poss the possibility of an EMP weapon or something like that. So there are a lot of things that you can do to prepare. Watch, if not my channel, other prepping channels on this. You know, get yourself a little bit ready. The next couple weeks, the next couple months are going to be very tense and very dangerous unless really just Donald Trump is able to act like a statesman. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, yeah, by the way, I've made up my mind on Donald Trump. I was giving him the benefit of the doubt when he first got elected. I was not all that uh, optimistic about his chances of being very successful, and I feel several months in, like, yeah, I'm just, just got to get through the next, next couple of years <laughs> and try something else. Um, I know maybe some people are still pro-Trump. Uh, I don't know why you would be. I think a lot of the good stuff that Trump talked about, you know, going against big government and all that, I mean, you know, term limits in, in Congress. Uh, I'd love to have a, a nationwide concealed carry. Um, all he's doing is just division politics and, um, you know, pumping up his popularity numbers, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I've made up my, my mind on Donald Trump. I'm always open. You know, if he just turned on a dime, started acting differently, I would, you know, come up with a different opinion. But that's where I am at the moment. I think I've made up my mind on Donald Trump. And hopefully he hasn't made up his mind on the North Korea thing. And uh, hopefully he can backpedal a little bit on that because it's very dangerous. We'll see. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.